so we will try to understand that now I just so that was about the support condition part now see above 10 meter height you have to provide fixed support as I told you to control the sway now see basically we are designing pre-engineering building structure for the dead load live load wind and earthquake okay so can anyone tell me uh, that why now my question is why steel structures are majorly governed for the wind and why RCC structures are majorly governed for the earthquake right most of the in the design part we mostly go with the dead load live load and earthquake combinations only right so see in case of RCC structures earthquake is the governing case while in case of steel structure wind is the governing case can anyone tell me why it is like this Okay, any other reason? Uh, that is that is the also a correct reason, but there is one more reason. Also, also yeah. the uh, as compared to switch. That's why wind for I thought wind structure, wind is governing case. Okay, Nayan wants to say something? yes your concrete mass is higher compared to your steel structural components okay and it will act as a rigid diaphragm mass source so compare if you are comparing the mass segment mass point of view density weight point of view then your RCC structures are very high in density part okay so in that case earthquake is the major governing case while in steel structure uh, compared to the RCC you don't have any mass segment at each segment it is a low rise or a single frame element which is a lightweight compared to the RCC so in that case you have uh, the what we can say the permissibility of the atmospheric condition as well so in that case you have suction and pressure conditions and due to the lightweight wind is majorly governing in steel structure okay in case of PEB I am talking if it is a processing plant then you need to go with the wind as well as earthquake both the cases okay and if it is higher uh, if in case of the dynamic loading is uh, considered let's say you have a processing plant then in that case you have to go with wind uh, dynamic analysis as well you static plus dynamic both the cases are performed all right now see uh, in case of the ACI components these are the specification they usually follow okay uh, the material specification for the built-up members uh, and their codal provisions and their yield strengths are provided over here in the table part so you can check out this see built-up members based on ASTM part uh, hot roll secondary sections are based on this 2062 coal form secondary members are based on this ASTM part we have sheeting panels X bracing members or rods see all these are secondary members to prevent the lateral deflections then we have anchor bolts nowadays we have separate manufacturers for the anchor bolts uh, all of you have must have heard about the Hilti right they are providing the anchor bolt design and details okay and see uh, the other one in the Indian code part we don't have the tapered profile segments okay so there is no separate code uh, specification for that particular part in the Indian code so that is another drawback over here now just to give you a brief about the components uh, I am sharing a picture with you so that you can get a little bit idea about what are the major components in this uh, in the PE engineering building part okay you can observe this uh, picture I hope it is clear with all of you you can see this and the text is visible 
is it visible let me just enlarge this okay so see uh, it's a sh uh, shade uh, in that particular each component is briefed okay uh, we uh, all of you have a little bit awareness about the components of what type of components we have but uh, let me start from here okay you have these roof panel mezzanine now mezzanine is basically uh, one kind of a slab only but it is separated with the structural part or it is connected it depends on the processing unit of the PEB shade okay if it's a storage facility and you just have to go with the maintenance purpose and the operational service purpose then in that case mezzanine floor will be connected with the columns but if it's a processing unit where you have machinery and dynamic loading then in that case mezzanine floor will be separately separately developed it's a simple slab like we have a usual slab but it is with the mezzanine where sheeting is provided in that particular we provide a deck slab okay then staircase is the common part to access the mezzanine floor okay now the end part of the truss segment is called AU strut so this particular component is the AU strut then we have fascia now I, I'll discuss this uh, part of fascia in detail later on with a picture and its purpose uh, roof sheeting as you can see over here now there is a cage ladder over here you can observe now it's a single cage ladder if you have multiple of multiple floors in your PEB structures then to access the roof or for the maintenance purpose okay uh, the cage ladder is provided okay now in cage ladder as well you can have a different category of cage ladder it depends uh, on the usual requirements and based on that uh, its uh, or its requirement will vary let me just give you a picture so that you may have idea see see it's a simple one kind of a ladder but with a safety you can see a periphery over here right to protect a person so that he will not fall down okay now it may have a different category let's say you have a multiple height let's say more than 10 meter then it will be uh, with a ramp platform which is uh, developed with a bracing component over here for the resting purpose for two different floors it can be something like this okay see this is one of the another clear picture you can get a idea about this cage ladder okay so this is one of the component and it's a part of PBs all right uh, then handrails are the major part of the staircase uh, then you have roof platforms okay then this uh, there is a term called ridge ventilator now all of you must have seen this type of circular fans to evacuate the uh, processing atmosphere which is inside of the pre-engineering building structure to evacuate that air you have this so at the certain locations you may have this ventilator part later on I'll give you a uh, certain tips related to that that how you can uh, consider all this loading and all that okay so you might have question right now that how its loading is concerned in the design part uh, then you have this roof purling then you have the side wall girds to support the secondary element part okay and then we have rigid frame a common frame uh, in which we have the purlins and girds now see girds uh, the bracing components are usually utilized in the pre-engineering building part to prevent its deflection lateral deflection in the longitudinal direction okay then we have this roof monitor now the other important part is your entrance now see if if it is a processing plant unit or it's a food storage plant unit then you must have a certain height limitations right because of the vehicles to to enter inside the plant okay for transferring the materials and goods so based on that its functionality and its purpose are different so based on that you have different categories of door it can be a roll roll up door means it's a simple shutter element uh, which is a movable with the motor 
uh, then you have canopy industrial lowers now it's simple one kind of chhajja you can say in terms of rcc we used to call it chhajja now in steel structure we used to call it canopy okay it is uh, provided uh, on your top of your door segments then double sliding doors are also provided now these three are the different categories of door uh, for the vehicle movement you have roll up door then double sliding doors are also provided in case of the material transformation okay and these are other simple components uh, i'll share this particular with you so you can observe this these are uh, the other components are not majorly govern in our designing part but you can observe this uh, the cage ladder roof platform i have already discussed and the other components we will check out i'll to tell you about the fascia part later on in detail okay so these are the basic components all of you have seen the pre engineering building structures that from outside it is covered with the gi sheets so based on thickness and its provision you can visit the man manufacturer's catalog catalog so they will provide the sheeting details based on your height width okay and thickness its requirement is different okay so it is available in 6 mm 8 mm 10 mm usual thickness now the next part is the roofing sheet element now see we have various category of roofing sheets now the normally the roofing sheet shall be made of galvium which is alloy of a zinc and aluminium that is called as galvium and it will be with a thickness of let's say very it the thickness shall be vary from 0.5 mm to 10 mm okay now the roofing sheets are provided with a segments with a coating of zinc and alloy as well as the color coating as you can see over here in the cross sectional profile so in this profile you can observe that with a base metal sheet you may have this alloy zinc alloy coating then you have the color coating okay so it will be called as a bare galvium if color is also required on roof then the sheet thickness shall be of 0.5 mm okay now see there are two categories uh, that you need to understand the first one is specified as in what we can say as bmt and the next one is tct now what is that so uh, bmt is specified basically as the base metal thickness which measures the steel substrate prior to any metal coating or paint being added to the substrate similarly a tct is specified as total coated thickness which measures the steel which measures the steel substrate as well as the metal metallic coating resin coating or paint film paint film okay uh, let me just give you a simple example let's say uh, we have various manufacturers of sheeting we have tata steel then jindal who and so many other manufacturing specification we have so many various manufacturers of roof sheeting materials if you just google it you will glad to know currently just for your understanding purpose i am providing one example let's say you have a specification of az150 coated product which will be labeled as 0.42 mm bmt okay it's a product code uh, from the tata blue scope steel which are the manufacturers of the roof sheeting elements okay so 0.42 mm bmt means that it will have tcd that is the total coated thickness in terms of 0.47 mm if the bmt is measured as 0.48 mm that means that the product will have tct of 0.53 mm which includes your color all the raising coating okay now for design calculations or structural designs one should use bmt since the actual strength of the material is from its base steel and the metallic coating layers provides the corrosion resistance against the natural weathering so that part you need to understand okay so that's the part of the roof sheeting specification now the material shall be of the cold rolled steel it can have a various strength varying from 550 megapascal yield strength 
with a hot deep metallic coating of aluminum zinc alloy okay if insulation is required then normally a wire mesh is provided okay or if you want to hide the roof same sheeting can be given below insulation and it is fixed above the purlins normally single skin sheeting is preferred with the wire mesh to hold the insulation for cost saving purposes so that was all about the roofing sheet okay different manufacturers you can refer and google different manufacturers of roof sheeting to get the more idea about the sheeting elements okay further in the design criteria i'll let you know how you can work out the roof sheeting weight in the calculation part